How's it going guys? I'm James from KitGuru and today we are looking at not just one but three new CPU coolers from Fractal Design. All three of these are the latest version of the Fractal Celsius series named the Celsius Plus and they are available in three different sizes. First of all you have the S24 that is a 240mm radiator with dual 120mm fans and then you can step up to the S28, that is a 280mm radiator with two 140mm fans. And then there's the top of the range S36, 360mm radiator and triple 120mm fans. The S24 is priced at $139.99. The S28 is $159.99. And then the top of the range S36 will set you back £185.99. So as well as being available in three different sizes, Fractal will also offer you these with two different versions of fans. All three that we have uh, are equipped with the Prisma RGB fans, they're a high static pressure fan, but there is also a, another version of these three coolers with a more understated and all black Dynamic X2 fan. So in terms of what's new in these Celsius Plus models, these are equipped with a Acertech Gen 6 pump and radiator setup. The previous Celsius uh, models were a Gen 5. And I actually reached out to uh, Fractal to see why they didn't use the, the latest Gen 7 Acertech design. And their explanation was that the Gen 6 is proven to offer good performance and it's a reliable setup. So, you know, that's a fair comment and we can't really knock them for that. So as well as being equipped with a Gen 6 Acertech pump and radiator setup, these new Celsius Plus CPU coolers have RGB lighting. That's something that was left out on the previous version. In the Prisma models that we have here, there's two zones of RGB lighting. There's RGB lighting on the CPU block and another RGB lighting zone in the fans. With the Dynamic X2 versions, you've just got RGB lighting on the CPU block. The Dynamic X2 fans are just a plain black standard looking fan. So as well as the new updates with the Celsius Plus series, Fractal has also carried over a few of the unique features from the previous models. And that includes the radiator mounted fan hub so you can connect up all the fans and the RGB light into the fan hub on the radiator and then all the cabling then goes from the fan hub through the sleeving on the tubing down to the pump housing or CPU block and then there is a single three pin cable that connects to the motherboard and then all the fan and pump speed is controlled through just one single connection so that will obviously make cable management a little bit easier and you should end up with a nice and neat and tidy looking end product. You don't have any extra um, RGB or fan controllers so there's a lot less wiring and there's no extra software needed to control these. Another feature that has been carried over from the previous Celsius models is the automatic and PWM fan control. Now that's an onboard switch it's actually the top of the CPU block that rotates and you can switch between either PWM fan control so you can set your own fan curves or you can use some of the standard fan curves in your motherboard BIOS or you can switch to auto mode and that uses the firmware built into the CPU cooler to control fan speeds and pump speeds. So it's up to you which one you want to use. So for the unboxing process, we've chosen the S36 360mm version, and that's just in case there's any, any additional pieces inside because of the uh, extra fan. So let's have a look and see what is inside. So first of all, you've got the user guide and installation manual. And then there's three of these Prisma RGB fans. These have a 
It's a kind of opaque white fan blade design. RGB lighting is behind this fan, so this will light up with RGB. There's also an opaque white ring around the uh, around the fan blade. There's also a rubberized fan mounting point, so they're anti-vibration to reduce noise. So yeah, overall, quite a nice looking fan. And then you've got a bag full of brackets and mounting hardware. Inside the bag, there's a, an Intel universal backplate. A metal upper mounting bracket for AMD AM4 platforms. An AM4 mounting hook, that's part of the bracket. There's a bag full of uh, long fan screws and washers to mount the fans to the radiator. There's also another bag of standoffs and thumb screws. There's a small RGB extension cable. And then there's two self adhesive clips to manage cables and make the system look neat and tidy. And then last but not least is the actual cooler itself. So at the base of the cooler you can see there's the traditional Acer Tech round copper thermal transfer plate. That looks like it's got a nice even machine into it and it's nice and smooth. There is some machining marks in the copper but they don't feel deep, you can't really even feel them with your fingernails, so yeah, that feels good. Um, it obviously comes with the Intel upper mounting bracket pre-installed. And there's a four pin PWM cable that goes to the motherboard. And then down at the bottom here you've got two 90 degree rotating fittings. So that should make installation a bit more simple, you'll be able to manoeuvre the CPU block into position easily and then moving further up you've got a nice premium looking braided sheathing along the tubing and then at the radiator end there's also rotating fittings as well both of those rotate and then there's the radiator mounted fan hub you can see there so the radiator is pretty much typical of an Acer Tech design it's quite a understated appearance, nothing too fancy to it. It's got quite a nice smooth and even black coating on it. Along the top you can see the, uh, the rivets that hold on the fan mount. Yeah, Overall, pretty nice and simple. So to install the cooler on an Intel platform you will need the universal backplate, four Intel standoffs with fine thread on either end, four thumb screws, 12 fan screws and washers and then obviously the fans and the cooler itself. If you want to connect up the RGB lighting you'll also need the RGB extension cable. So for the first part of installation you need to decide whether you want your fans in a pull or push configuration and then just take the 12 long fan screws and washers and then screw the fans into position. So because this cooler series has a radiator mounted RGB fan hub, now that we've got the fans uh, fixed to the radiator, we can actually connect up the RGB lighting and the fan cables to the fan hub. So to do this, we simply daisy chain the RGB cables together. Then simply just connect the the last RGB cable to the hub and then we can just plug in all three of the fan cables so the next step is on to preparing the motherboard so we just take the universal backplate and just slot that in position through the holes on the motherboard just like so and then flip the motherboard back over and then take the Intel standoffs screw those into position this one's a little bit tricky because it's close to the heatsink on the motherboard so that's it, yep, just screw those down by hand until they feel nice and tight 
same for the other two. That's pretty much the motherboard prepared. So these coolers actually come with a pre-applied thermal compound, but the reason it's missing off our cooler is because we've actually had it on and off the system a couple of times. So for the next step of the installation, we just need to lower the CPU block into position over the CPU and then just tighten on the four thumb screws that come provided. You then tighten them down in an X shape pattern so that it provides equal pressure to the CPU so it spreads the thermal compound nice and evenly. So all we need to do now is take the PWM cable from the CPU block, connect that to our CPU fan header on the motherboard, and then take the RGB extension cable, plug that into the side of the CPU block, and then just connect that up to a RGB, a three pin RGB connection on the motherboard. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the installation process of these uh, Gen 6 Acertec designs is pretty straightforward and you shouldn't really run into any problems if you've installed a CPU cooler before you will find this really quite simple. So as I mentioned earlier one of the new features of this Celsius Plus cooler is the addition of RGB lighting. So since the RGB lighting connects directly to the motherboard you'll be able to choose different RGB lighting colours and patterns using the motherboard RGB software. Obviously depending on which motherboard you use will determine how many different colours and patterns there are to choose from. With our Gigabyte motherboard we can obviously scroll through various different colours and there are a few different RGB patterns you can flick through. So since we've got three different versions of the same cooler with three different radiator sizes and fan configurations we thought this would be a good opportunity to do maybe a little bit more performance testing that we normally do. We will still do our Intel Z390 based uh, performance testing like we usually do and compare the performance of these Celsius Plus CPU coolers to other CPU coolers we've tested previously but we'll also do a little bit of back-to-back -back testing on an AMD Ryzen 3000 platform and uh, measure how the thermal performance changes depending on whether you have the CPU cooler set in its PWM mode or in its auto mode. So during our Intel testing, fan control is set to PWM mode on the device and the fans and pump, we actually set those to 100% RPM in the Gigabyte motherboard BIOS. And during our initial thermal performance testing with the Core i9-9900K set at an all-core frequency of 3.6 GHz, all three of the Celsius Plus all-in-one coolers recorded a solid result. And they're all placed within the top half of our chart and all perform within about 1 degree C of each other. So with the CPU then set to 4.7 GHz across all cores, again the performance of all three Celsius Plus coolers is quite impressive. The 280mm S28 and the 360mm S36 are very evenly matched, with the S24 240mm version recording average temperature just a fraction higher. Thermal performance in our extreme overclocking test with the CPU set at 4.9 GHz, again we see all three of the Celsius Plus coolers performing excellent. The S28 280mm version just marginally outperforms the 360mm version and it actually sits in joint third position in our chart. Both the S36 and the S24 are not far behind. In terms of the noise levels, with the fans running at 100% RPM, noise levels are slightly on the high side. However, the S28 280mm version specifically is well within tolerable noise limits and it's not really distracting at all. Both the S36 and the S24 coolers that are equipped with the 120mm fans they're obviously a little bit louder but by no means are they the highest noise levels we've ever seen. So this shows to me that the 
overall performance of this all-in-one CPU cooler is solid all round. So moving on to the back-to-back -back testing on the AMD platform, we set the CPU to run at its stock operation to see what the real-world performance of the coolers would be in their PWM and auto fan configuration modes. We ran the ADA64 stress test for 40 minutes with each cooler in both the PWM and auto mode and then recorded the results in the charts you can see on the screen now. With the information gathered we can clearly see that the thermal performance is best in the PWM mode and we were also able to see how thermal performance affects CPU core boost frequency. So again with the coolers in PWM mode we can see that both the average and maximum core frequency boosts higher with the coolers running in this mode compared to the auto mode. So now we've seen how you install these coolers, we've seen what their thermal performance is like. Now we can talk about the things that we liked and what we didn't like about them. For me, one of the interesting new options with this CPU cooler series is the fact that you can choose whether you want RGB lighting or you don't want RGB lighting with the fans. The Prisma version offers full RGB lighting. The Dynamic X2 version is obviously a little bit more understated. So, you know, you've got the choice there. A couple of other things that I like about these coolers is you've got the uh, cabling that runs through the braided sleeving. So that keeps the system looking nice and tidy. You've also got the fan hub mounted on the radiator. Again, this helps with the overall tidiness and the appearance of the system. So while we quite like this fan hub mounted on the radiator. It does throw up a little bit of an issue for me. That's more to do with the length of the fan cables. On the end fan on the 360mm version, if you have the fan positioned in a certain spot, then the fan cable is really tight and it only just reaches to the fan hub. And then obviously with all the fan cables being the same length, the middle and the other end, they are a little bit long. They could do with being a little bit shorter and that would make managing the cables and making the system look neat at the end a lot easier. One other thing that we didn't like so much about these CPU coolers as well is the auto fan mode. In PWM mode, everything works perfectly. You can just set the motherboard fan software to run the fans in whichever profile you like, or you can set your own fan curve. But with the auto mode, we found it was a little bit too conservative. It seems as though the firmware targets noise levels uh, a little bit too much. Uh, we would like to have seen a little bit more thermal performance from the auto mode. During our AMD back-to-back -back testing, we noticed that the CPU temperature was getting really hot at some point, and that obviously made the CPU frequency throttle down to a lower speed, which obviously affects performance. But overall, as a complete package, we really quite like these coolers. Thermal performance in PWM mode is very good. It's up there with some of the best coolers we've tested. And the addition of RGB lighting gives it a little bit more style compared to the previous versions. So yeah, there's a thumbs up for us for that. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, why not hit the bell button to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Uh, you can also head over to our Facebook page where you can discuss what you think about this uh, CPU cooler or other components that we reviewed. There's also the full written review of this CPU cooler over on the KitGuru website. So head over there and check that out. Uh, and don't forget to pick up some of our merch. I've been James from KitGuru. Thank you for watching. <music>